Okay. So uh, I'm Fred. I'll be uh, talking about Salmon, um, which is this is a volunteer proxy-based system for internet censorship circumvention. All right. So uh, to start off, let me just really quickly talk about um, the the problem we're dealing with and the general approach we're going to take. So we're we're trying to we're trying to you know provide internet access to people who are living under censorship, um, and we're going to do it by um, trying to give them just direct VPN servers to connect through. And so the way the sensor is going to try to fight that is to discover those servers and block them. So this isn't something like uh, decoy routing or domain fronting where we're sort of just um, make, doing something that the sensor just can't deal with. Rather, we're, we're doing something that the sensor totally could block. We're just trying to hide it from them. All right? um, so it's uh, the, the most important thing to, like, the most important uh, part of the threat model that we should keep in mind when we're talking about this um, is that we're assuming for, for what I'm going to be talking about in this presentation. So there's, there's more in the paper that goes more into the real world stuff. But uh, for the algorithm stuff I'm going to be talking about here, we're assuming that the sensor can only block our proxy servers if we give them to them. So we have this distribution mechanism, which is what we're evaluating. And the sensor can only block our servers if we have mistakenly, intentionally handed them out to them. Now, in the real world, of course, there's you know traffic fingerprinting, like cookies that they might, other other things they could do to maybe discover addresses. We do address that in a bit in the paper. Um, so don't think I'm just glossing over it. Uh, but for what I'm talking about here, we're assuming that this is just a, it's basically just a game we're playing with a sensor um, of, you know. How are they going to behave in our system, and does that let them block servers? All right. So with that, um, let me before we go into the, the the theoretical algorithm stuff, let me just talk at least a little bit about the system that we've actually designed and deployed. Um, so as I said, uh, this is it's VPN server based. So the entire thing re revolves around we have a network of people volunteering to run VPN servers, similarly to Tor, people volunteering to run relay servers and maybe you know uh, hidden bridges and exit nodes and stuff. Um, and we're distributing these out to users. And this, that is, um, the distribution is what's important here. So if we just give the whole list of servers out to anyone who asks for it, obviously the server can come along, ask for the whole list, and block all of the servers. So what we want to do is, um, hand out just a few servers at a time, and keep track of what is happening when we give what servers to whom. All right? Um, now we, so the, the, the entity doing all of this logic, the tracking the volunteer servers, tracking the users, and giving servers to users, it's just a centralized server. Um, again, this is, so this is something that would be a good target for the sensor to block. Um, so we need some way for the users to get there in the first place. We just have built into our client. Um, we have machinery for for them to for the client's requests to get tunneled through um, an encrypted email provider like uh, Gmail or something, um, or any other encrypted provider that isn't blocked in the user's country because Gmail is not necessarily a good choice for that. All right. Um, now, the last thing I should say before we move on to the actual algorithm stuff is the most important for this talk of this real world stuff, which is that we need some sort of barrier to entry. Um, because we can have, we can talk about these you know, interesting algorithms for sussing out who's a sensor agent and who's not. Um, but all of that falls apart completely if the sensor can just insert as many fake identities as it wants into the system. Um, because then they can have you know, 10 times as many uh, fake users as there are real users. And there's no way that, you know, no matter how smart your algorithm is, uh, you're going to get overwhelmed. So we, um, we try to establish this, this foundation for our system, uh, this, this barrier to entry to keep, to keep the fake identities to a minimum, at least, um, by requiring either that the user present, presents us with a plausible-looking Facebook account or that they get recommended by a user um, already in our system whom we already trust. And I'm going to be talking pretty soon about what trust means to us. Um, so for the, face for the Facebook account checking, what we do, what we're doing right now is we just require the account to have been created 
before a certain date so that the sensor can't just come along and make a bunch of Facebook accounts, and also to have some posts on it. Um, so that's that's a pretty simple um, that's a pretty simple approach. You could imagine much more sophisticated things like some sort of machine learning to say, oh, does this look like a good page or not? Um, those are things that could be added to basically strengthen the system. Okay, so with all of that, let me now move on to the actual uh, the algorithm, the distribution algorithm that is the center of this system. All right, so this, this distribution algorithm uh, comprises three components. There's suspicion, trust, and recommendation grouping. So the suspicion is kind of the, the suspicion, suspicion is the, the foundation of everything. Um, and it's, this is the, the logic of banning people from our system who we suspect might be actually working for the sensor trying to discover servers. So basically what we're gonna say is, all right, we're gonna keep track of you. We're gonna keep, we're gonna keep track of what servers we gave you and you know, if your server gets blocked, we're like, all right, you're not the only person on that server. There are also these other people. So all these people on this blocked server, we suspect, you know, maybe it was you. Um, and after any given user has witnessed enough of these server blocks, had servers blocked while they were assigned to them, we're eventually going to say, all right, there's a good chance that you're an agent of the sensor, so we're going to ban you from the system. You know, you're gone. You're never coming back. Um, so this clearly, there's, there's collateral, collateral damage going on. Um, we end up banning some fraction of our users. Um, that's bad, obviously. It's, it's inevitable for this approach. Um, but on the bright side, we're also permanently banning any agents of the sensor, which means that if, if we are managing to limit the sensor's identity creation so that they can't just keep creating, inserting as many identities as they want forever, if they have some finite supply of identities, um, even though they get some of our users banned, they're also eventually going to just get wiped out of the system and the attack is over. So that's good. Okay, so that's the suspicion component. Um, the thing that really, uh, the thing that makes Salmon effective um, and makes it, um, yeah, makes it effective um, is this trust level logic. And this is actually, just as a fun aside, this is what uh, the system's named after. We call it Salmon because the, we have these trust levels of, all right, so first I should say what they are, then I'll say why we named it that. All right, so we have this idea of trust um, that's basically if you have been using our system for a while and the servers we assigned you have not been getting blocked, then we're going to say, all right, we trust that you, you look like you're not causing trouble so far, so we're going to trust you more and more as time goes on. Um, and we quantify that as discrete trust levels. Um, so you, you, after you've been in the system for a while without blocking your servers, you'll go up a level, up a level, up a level. All right. Um, and so we call it salmon because it's like uh, salmon sort of hopping up levels in a waterfall and maybe falling back down if servers get blocked. Um, all right. And finally, we, uh, so we also, as I said earlier, you can get into the system if someone who's highly trusted recommends you. Um, this would be an issue if, this can be an issue if the sensor just gets, is patient enough to get a group of its users up to the top level and then start recommending people in and you can get exponential growth of their, their network that way, um, which would just completely defeat us. Uh, and so to defeat, to, to stop that, we group people together with, the people they recommend or who recommended them. So if, if you think of, if you look at all of our users, um, you end up with a forest of, based on, with links being recommendations. And so each tree in this forest will always be on the same server. So if you have a tree of a bunch of sensor agents who recommended each other, um, they're just going to always be on the same server. And so they're spending all of their, you know, they're all going to get banned just to block a couple of servers. And on the other side of that coin, um, if you have a bunch of good users, uh, they're going to be on a server together, and it's just them on that server, so they're never going to get their server blocked. So that's good. All right, so um, the, these trust levels are, you, you get promoted um, with exponential wait times. So it takes two days to get to first level, then four days, et cetera. 
So to get from the very entry level all the way to the top is going to take 128 days. Um, so aside from the fact that it just gives you a nice long wait time to get all the way to the top, the, the exponential, the specific distribution means that even if your user base was growing exponentially, um, you're still going to get a nice even spread among the trust levels of your users, which is important because, I mean, if you had, um, if you had everyone in the same trust level, obviously it's like you just didn't have trust levels. All right. Um, so this is just, I uh, just want to quickly show, this is what happens, this is why trust levels are beneficial. So if we just take the whole SAMA design and disable them, um, the, in the work with, uh, you basically get double or triple the number of innocent users who get banned from the system or other, or cut off from servers. Um, and with them, it does much better. Um, one minute. Okay. Uh, um, let's skip this. Uh, okay. Um, and all right, so that's that was just comparing sort of comparing the performance of the system to a crippled version of itself. So I should also um, point out that uh, this is this is a comparison to the previous um, best work, um, Arbridge, which is effectively sort of a it's effectively the suspicion component of Salmon alone. Um, it kind of goes about it a different way, but it, it ends up being the same sort of philosophy. Um, so we also do a good deal better than that. Um, and finally, this recommendation grouping, just to demonstrate how bad it would be if we weren't doing it. So on, on the left, th this is a scenario where the sensor has been patient and let a bunch of, let a bunch of its agents get up to, the, up to the level, the top level, where they're able to recommend people, then bring a few people, bring a few, each each identity brings a few more in, and so if we don't do this recommendation grouping, they're able to basically completely shut down the system, um, whereas if we do have the grouping on, they do damage, but it's not really, it, the, there are still over half of the users um, with access. Um, all right, um, okay, so that's, that's it. Um, I'll take time, I don't, I, time for questions? Okay, thanks. Um, so yeah.